I work on optical transmission systems, particularly very high capacity transmission over optical fibres. Really, we're, we're battling against many different things all the time. We have the, the physical nature of the channel, what the fibre does to the signal uh, when we transmit it. We then have uh, what's feasible to create with current technology in terms of the transmitter and receiver designs, how much complexity we can put into a microchip, how much power we can consume, and then we also have the fundamental uh, limits in terms of the information theory and communication theory, and you know we're always approaching in some sense an asymptote. This is a conventional 100 gigabit per second transmission system. These have been around since maybe uh, commercially available since about 2008, 2009, and they use typically a single optical wave, so there's a, a single color or frequency of light, and then we modulate that in terms of changing the signal phase, the signal polarization, and this enables us to encode the data onto the, the light wave. So this system has a bandwidth of around 30 gigahertz, seems very fast but for optical systems it's kind of uh, about average nowadays. So then this is our new method and now uh, we're in order to achieve one terabit per second we're transmitting uh, 11 wavelengths now instead of one and the reason that we're doing this is twofold. One is that the receiver can actually receive now a lot more bandwidth uh, than previously. So we can receive 120 gigahertz, 125 gigahertz of bandwidth um, all in one go. However, currently the transmitter technology hasn't quite caught up. And in order to maintain very good uh, signal integrity and very low noise at the transmitter, it's better to reduce the bandwidth. So the way that we uh, square the circle, if you like, is that we use several, uh, in this case 11, very closely spaced carriers and we modulate them uh, with almost no gap between the channels. So very, very spectrally efficient. Um, and then we can detect all 11 of these uh, subcarriers in one go at the receiver and then jointly process them with uh, one, uh, one set of algorithms. So this is really the, the illustration of the primary problem that we have in this system. So when we transmit our 11 subchannels, uh, we find that they all undergo slightly different impairments, uh, essentially due to the physical nature of the system. There are some differences in the electrical path and the optical path for each of these different uh, channels. And, and therefore they, they don't all look exactly the same when we receive them, even though they are correlated in, in some other ways. So conventional receiver techniques will really just try and um, treat each of these channels independently. So in some cases that might work, but it doesn't exploit the similarities between these different subchannels. Um, so one thing that we, we've uh, come across that works very well is to insert these periodic pilot signals. So we insert a known signal uh, every so often into the data and we uh, transmit this. So when this arrives at the receiver, we again have these uneven distortions that are different from subchannel to subchannel. Um, but by using the known signals that occur every so often, we're able to much better compensate for these uh, unknown distortions. So this is uh, a, a greatly simplified schematic of the, uh, of the experimental setup. We have, uh, first of all, the data, which is uh, a terabit of data, and we have some uh, additional overhead for forward error correction coding. So that's where we add, we add some redundancy that allows us to say, uh, solve a bunch of equations at the receiver to figure out how to correct any, uh, any errors that may have occurred in transmission. 
We then split this data into uh, 11 channels, or 11 sub-channels, that we're going to modulate on one wavelength each. And then we insert uh, some pilot symbols. Uh, in this case, 1% of symbols carry no information. They just carry uh, a reference signal. So we're then modulating these signals, and we can see here this uh, signal structure is uh, 64 quadrature amplitude modulation. So there are 64 points here in a square grid, and each of these points uh, will represent a certain combination of bits. So there are 64 points here, which in binary terms means we can represent um, six bits using one of these, uh, each one of these points. And we transmit six bits on uh, two orthogonal polarizations for each of these 11 subchannels. Now, once we have this electrical signal, we then uh, translate it into the optical domain using a, an optical modulator. So we have the laser, which we then turn into uh, 11 synchronized uh, subchannels. And we do that using uh, this optical comb generator. Um, so we then have 11 copies, uh, essentially, of the same, uh, the same wave, but all at different frequencies. So when we uh, modulate them with the modulator, we find that we have, uh, as we see in this uh, schematic, we have 11 uh, subchannels with almost no gap between them. So because we have no gaps, we're essentially wasting very little bandwidth. So we're very efficient in terms of bandwidth. Um, so then we transmit the signal over a single fiber um, to the receiver. Now the receiver, um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, has much more bandwidth than the transmitter because the, the technology in this area is much more advanced than the transmitter technology. So we can use only a single laser at the receiver. And we mix this laser uh, with the received signal. And then we convert everything into the electrical domain and then uh, digitize it uh, using an analog to digital converter. What we see here is uh, just a single uh, of the subchannels. So this is the best example of the signal. This is the one with the the lowest number of errors per bit. Um, so in the first case uh, here, we see the signal before really we do anything to it. So we have a lot of distortion. In addition to the noise, we see distortion from uh, physical effects in the transmitter, in the receiver, and in the fiber. That's right, yeah. Um, so then we we perform equalization on this. So this tries to undo the distortion that occurs in the transmitter and the receiver uh, and the fiber due to things like insufficient bandwidth. And uh, we can compensate here for all the distortion uh, in the amplitude. The one thing that remains here is the uh, rotation due to laser phase. The reason that we separate these two things out is that the amplitude distortion uh, actually happens on a very slow time scale. Um, whereas the phase distortion changes extremely rapidly. So after we've uh, compensated for all this amplitude distortion, we then uh, track this uh, phase rotation using the pilot symbols that we introduced at the transmitter. The receiver knows the symbols that were transmitted, and therefore, by comparing the transmitted and received symbols, we're able to figure out the change in laser phase as we're going through. And so this looks pretty stationary, and this means that we can uh, then go and decide uh, what was the likelihood of any particular bit being a one or a zero. And then once we have that done, then we send it to uh, a soft decision decoder, which basically, rather than taking a, 
a one or a zero, it takes a likelihood of a transmitted bit being a one or a zero. And we can go through a process and make a big decision based on a lot of bits collectively and the uh, equations in the encoder at the transmitter, we can decide on which bits uh, really were transmitted ones and which really were transmitted zeros. So even though this is the best example, um, on average, over all 11 uh, subchannels, the average bit error rate was about 5%. So one in every 20 bits transmitted would have been received in error. And using the forward error correction techniques, which, uh, which uh, Mitsubishi Electric is very well known for and Merle has spent uh, many years developing, uh, we can improve this 5% uh, bit error rate down to something that's uh, better than 10 to the power minus 15. So one in every quadrillion bits maximum can be an error. So really we're designing this kind of technology to go into very high speed optical transmission systems. So these might be things that would uh, connect internet exchanges together between, for example, Boston and New York City, or they would connect uh, even continents together. Uh, so maybe between New Jersey and Ireland or California and Japan. The idea with, with this particular kind of transmission system is that uh, any errors uh, can be catastrophic because the delays between transmitting and receiving can be uh, reasonably large from a communications point of view. So you don't ever want to have to retransmit anything. So therefore, we have this uh, bit error rate requirement of 10 to the power minus 15, which is much, uh, much stricter than you might get in uh, a cell phone system or a Wi-Fi system or something like that.